Okay, so here that is how this thing works. I, uh, I've got this video that I want to uh, apply to, so I can cut and paste the arrow into my tool, and then I hit go, and we will use this to watch the video. Okay, so I have entered all, uh, I've watched this video and taken some notes with the tool. Now I'm going to use them to play the video back. So, okay, first intro. So, I feel very um, frustrated. I just had, an, uh, I was commenting back and forth with this person on on the nature of okay so the person's me and uh piero and um well i'm glad you're all calm i'm sorry you're fr frustrated um a, a lot of analysts have been angry at me and i'm sorry if you've gotten frustrated seeing me be all upset with analysts but i don't group people in groups and be mad at a group so it's an individual thing. It's just those, the analysts have been very insulting. And you aren't in this video, so that's cool. So let's uh, jump ahead here. Like, we can't know anything about, we can't make any objective statements or assertions or whatever about the world, the reality that exists independently of our minds he seems to think that everything we know of the world every fact we can get is only subjective because uh, knowledge is uh, mediated through the mind yeah that's exactly what I think good job a lot of people don't get that so I don't well, I guess we'll we get into later why this is a, a, an issue because you want to use the word objective to mean, <clears throat> you know, taking statistics off of unreliable facts, and that's not what it means. Okay, um, so yeah, it's just a, there's a classical terminology. There's a meaning to objectivist metaphysics, uh, and that's what's being rejected. Then you describe how you can rationally think things and you, you know that that's a good thing well yes it is but you do make a few uh, what I think are metaphysical errors you have some things in your ontology we'll get to that are not actually necessary Let's see I forget should I keep going we'll skip uh, look you've got to start with some basic assumptions here one of the most basic of assumptions if you're going to do this good philosophy thing and not be a solipsist is to assume that there is an independent reality world universe that okay see it doesn't make sense independent all we have is our dependence on this universe uh, to establish its existence so saying that we have to assume it's independent when all we can have is by definition evidence of interdependency uh, it just doesn't make sense this could be a dream world you don't have to assume that it's not a dream world okay now what you're getting at is an idea of agency the question is not if it's independent but do you have control of it okay so for example at night you have dreams but by no means do you have conscious control of them usually people don't have any conscious what they like to call conscious control though there's lucid dreaming and etc and there's of course a lot of interesting questions about the appearance where people think they have consciousness but as in waking uh, experience they wouldn't call the the dream consciousness actually conscious and um, but the point is that you've got um, you've got a sort of a, a solipsistic situation epistemologically and there's no problem with that you it, if you're in a dream world that is secondary to this issue 
The real issue is, do you have agency? Are you causing the dream? Okay. So when you say independence, it's, it's simply that, is there stuff happening that I'm not willing? And when you take into account the blurring into the unconscious, you can't really know that, but, but you can say, are you consciously willing it? You can form it as a question of agency. Yes, our knowledge of this world is mediated through our senses and our mind. How we, how we apply reason and logic to the data that's presented to our five senses, right? Right. Yes, that's, our knowledge of... That's, that's the issue. That and many other things shows that there's not an objective knowledge. There's a, a web of statistics put on facts that are always taken from a point of view, from some subject's point of view. Skip ahead here. ...mean that we cannot make credible or um, sufficiently strong statements of this world. Um, like... Okay, I believe we can do that, make sufficiently strong. For what? For acting. For acting on. Yes, our knowledge of this world is mediated through our mean that we cannot make credible or um, sufficiently strong statements of this world. Um, like, yeah, okay, let me try to put it this way. We're looking at the object from many different angles, from many different uh, persons, let's say. But... And when we talk to each other about it, we seem to agree or... I'm sorry, I went too long there. Yeah, but it's, it's very... you can make authoritative statements. I'm going to have a way to have a, an end point to the segment so it automatically stops playing. Yeah, but it's, it's very... you can make authoritative statements and that's what I mean by objective. Objective statements are not 100% proof. They are statements. Okay, but that's where you're wrong. Uh, objective statement is that. Okay, being objective in the sense of trying to eliminate your bias and admit with your bias and, you know, doing scientific... That, that's a, a skeptical epistemology. Okay, that's not an objective epistemology about an external world. What's correlated is you get sense perceptions and is your model correlated to that? If you drop an object in time how long it'll take, you know, is your model accurate? Now, if other people will get the same answer or not has always been an open question. We thought, oh, people would get the same answer if they're careful and we find out relativity. But it's still, if you're in the same rest frame, yes, you can expect to have common facts. Okay. It's not objective, though. It's all built uh, by individuals. Facts, inferences, credible inferences from the sense data that's given to us. Credible, yes. Facts, inferences, credible inferences from the sense data that's given to us that allows us to make claims of this world. But this world is the world of our evidence. We compare our claims and then we go get evidence through our senses and we compare those two. And if they compare well, we say it's true. Now you can pretend you're comparing it with the real world. Now you're comparing it with the measurements you took in the real world. That, that's reasonable and that, that, uh, that a rational person should have confidence in believing. Yes, and I believe that too, but again, it doesn't matter if it's an external world, it just matters that <clears throat> it's consistent in certain ways, and that's your belief is about it, those consistencies. Like, for example, it does not matter if you're in a matrix, if you're in a dream, if things fall at a certain speed and crush your foot, if they fall on it, then that consistency is enough to have knowledge sufficient and reasonable to act upon. Right. That's what I'm saying. There is an objective world. And yes, we, we, we understand this world through our subjective perceptions, but... I think the way I put this is that there is, I believe, a source of our perceptions. 
Okay, and I believe that the granting of agency to to other people is fundamentally true, and that this source is an in-between space. But thinking of it objectively as a sets of things and objects introduces a lot of errors because with relativity you find that it's more of a network of relationships between things and my relationship with you is different from my relationship with this a star traveling at you know half the speed of light relative to me so I have a different facts exchange you know my rate of time is the same as with you but not as with that other star and so on we don't know uh, that what this world is about. Uh, we have a lot of um, information about the world. And um, uh, based on what we know, we have to draw the logical conclusions. And the logical conclusion is, yeah, we're not doing anything special. <sighs> anyway, I just felt it. Well, I mean, I think it's special. You know, doing things in my life is special. I think it, your life is special, and they might be infinitesimally s special, but when you add up all seven billion, if they all could do something special, and it is important, you want to say, well, that's not special enough. By what criteria? By needing some sort of a god to, to sanction it? You know, um, yeah. But anyway, thanks for your video reply, and... Uh, I, I appreciate it. Cheers.